Does Netflix's new physical 100 finally change the perception of Asian men in media? I don't know. We got to talk about it. Physical 100 is a Netflix show that is going viral right now. I believe it is number six ranked globally. Whoa. It's got a buff, uh, got a bunch of buff chiseled Korean dudes doing challenges mixed with buff Korean women. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of talk about will the cyclist beat the wrestler? Will the wrestler beat the bodyguard? So we got to talk about it. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and let's get into the reactions, Andrew. Some people were like, oh my gosh, even in battle, these Korean warriors are so respectful to each other. We're not like that to each other in the Western world. <laughs> I'm mean, amazed. <laughs> guys, Asian people in Asia, of course, there's going to be Asian values. I remember when people first started talking about Terrace House, and they were like, oh, it's just like real world. It has all the drama, except it's not like raunchy like an MTV show. They're not all just trying to sleep with each other. And I was like, yeah, okay. Now, Andrew, there is a few characters on Physical 100 that do not show the same level of extreme respect yeah. to each other that the others do. <laughs> <laughs> However, Andrew, people contrasted that by saying, well, you know, real Western warriors, they do show respect to each other, but it's just this whole media thing where you make more money if you're disrespectful. That's why somebody like Conor McGregor, even if he wants to show you respect, he's going to be disrespectful to you to sell more tickets. Yeah, it seems like the West and the East are definitely flipped in this situation. I know one championship, you know, which is like the Asian UFC, they show respect all the way through. Maybe deep down, they don't respect each other, but they have to show respect. While in the West, you make more money by drumming up this whole beef that you have, even though at the end of the day, you got are both going to get paid a bunch of money to fight each other. Somebody said, man, is this the show that stocky Asian guys finally needed? If K-pop and K-dramas are for the skinny lover boys with super sharp, razor sharp faces, is this the show for the thick boys? I mean, I think I, you know, I always look at Western culture and all the action stars that, that we have, like The Rock, Chris Hemsworth, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Channing Tatum, Gerard Butler, even Michael B. Jordan's, you know, beefed up now. And I think that, yeah, I mean, this is a good archetype to put out there. Maybe, who knows, after after the show, there's a little bit more roles for buff Asian guys. Now, are they all stocky? I mean, some of them are really stocky in that show, but maybe there's more like, I don't know, maybe it just kind of puts them more on the map and more into people's minds so that there's more like roles for them or something like that. I actually think this weightlifter Asian guy archetype has been around even in Asia, but as well as, as in America, Bart Kwan was one of the first guys to do it for about 10 years now, but it has uh, yet to sort of breach mainstream. So this is the first time that a mainstream show with a high budget is being structured around these ultra ripped beefcake Asian dudes and girls. Hey, um, <laughs> David, we had Fred, this other comment actually comes from Fred, our camera guy. He's a Gen Z and uh, he doesn't watch that much sports, but he he said, oh, man, after watching this show, me and my friends had to go wrestle each other. Hey, man, representation is important. I think a lot of times, you know, you need to see somebody that you feel like you grew up like or that maybe you uh, aspirationally yeah. want to look like or does look like you. And then it's going to just motivate you differently. I think this show is super impactful for a lot of the Korea boos or the people who don't usually watch sports shows. And then this is like the most physical sport style show that they're watching. So it kind of does inspire that crowd a lot more. Yeah. And what guy would not want to relate to sexy Yama? Dude, <laughs> he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, dude, why are Korean shows so good? Koreans are like the perfect people, man. They act like animes. They're so respectful. They're so good looking in their face. They're so good looking in their body. Oh my gosh, they're awesome. And somebody else said, dude, you're disgusting. Quit fetishizing them. Everybody's got good or bad. And they're just showing you the good part. And then you're just like buying into it. All right. Uh, first of all, I think Koreans do a really good job, and I think these the producers of these shows, whether it's Squid Game or Physical 100 or any of those other singles, Inferno, they're they're getting paid a lot. Like these are great producers. Um, but also, I do think as much as Koreans are, you know, very good looking and very talented, the Korean industry is also highly selective. So are Koreans more perfect or are they more selective? And here's the thing, I do think that they're like close to perfect people, at least on the outside, are more willing to engage in media. Yeah. Because some other countries, they might have like these people, but they're like, no, 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 no cameras, no cameras. Wait, um, wait, 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 what do you mean? Are you, are you talking about maybe China? 
Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think China has a lower proportion of these people, possibly on a population distribution basis, but they might not want, be willing yeah. to engage in media anyway or yeah. might not be like I, media savvy I, or media trained. I do feel like anybody who's considered good looking or talented in Korea is definitely looking for their shot to get put on right now because- Oh, I have something to offer. Maybe I can also offer it on a show. Hey, you look like pretty good. So like you could probably do one of the- 50 Netflix shows that like Korea is going to produce this year. Girl said this did make me more attracted to this male archetype because I'm affected by media. Some girls had their self-awareness. I mean, do you think that it's possible that I mean, other people are going to be going after, you know, the beefcake dudes? Uh, I mean, I think strong men always had their appeal, uh, whether no matter how. Gym girls always like gym guys. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously there's a bunch of gym girls and gym guys in this show. I mean, dude, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I guess. Do you think it will improve the archetype of the female bodybuilder? Um, I think if more guys get buff, they will appreciate buff women more. But if you're not a buff guy, highly unlikely that you like a buff woman. Um, Andrew, there was some criticisms of the show. People said some of the challenges were a little bit obtuse and difficult to understand how to win. And uh, some of them said they were just based off brute strength. So the man is going to win like eight out of 10 times versus the woman. And somebody also said, I don't know, the translations and the captions of the dialogue kind of make Koreans sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I had to obviously watch an episode of the show to understand what everybody's talking about. Um, I mean, it might be a translation thing, or it might also be a fact that you're talking to a bunch of beefcakes. You know, I'm not saying that these people are stupid by any means. I think the translation kind of makes them sound a little bit more simple. Like, like, right, like somebody's running faster, like, wow, he is running fast, faster than the wind. But, all right, on the flip side, if you did just do this, a show in America, even with just a bunch of beefcake, like gym dudes, you're not going to hear like, most likely you're not going to hear the highest volume of like super intelligent things anyways. Dude, why are you serious stereotyping beefcakes as like non-poetic and non-hipsters, bro? That is such like societal like boxes, bro. Um, Last comment was someone was like, yeah, I think if China did this show, everybody would call it propaganda. <laughs> But I, I guess, you know, some people think that the whole K-Wave and Hallyu is like part of Korean propaganda to prop up the image of Koreans around the world. First of all, listen, man, if they got the people and they got the shows, they're making great entertainment. Yeah. So shout out I to I mean, them. all media is propaganda. Hip hop is propaganda. Everything is propaganda, by, but it just depends on what level. And also sometimes people embrace the propaganda. Otherwise, otherwise people go against it. Uh, Let's get into our takeaways, man. David. I'm actually happy about the show, man. Wow, I know a I'm lot shocked. of people have been asking us to talk about this so for a shocked. few weeks. And uh, I finally got my chance to like sink my teeth into it. Between shout out to Sexy Yama, shout out to Sung Bin, the um, Olympic, you know, downhill yeah, ice skier. I mean, like, it's just cool to see people with the bigger, beefier bodies. Obviously, I am not on that level of ripness or body fat percentage that they have. But it was just cool to see them and have them almost have an arc and drama. And people were like, oh my gosh, is the cyclist going to lose to the wrestler? Even though we thought in this challenge of pushing the boulder up the hill, the cyclist quads will like help him win more. Like that's a more interesting type of drama, right? You know what I love? I love that if it kind of increases the IQ and the knowledge base of a lot of fitness, like in America or like to anybody watching the show, like if it is informative, you know, and I think there is a little bit of talk, although I wouldn't say they dive into the science of why someone won, right? Because maybe that's very assumptive, but like, you know, there is more talk about stability, core strength. Oh, right, like what? The, the really buff yeah. guy with all the bulky muscles lost to a guy that was slimmer. Right. It's something that he looked like he should have won. Exactly. So like what's rock climbing strength versus just brute strength. And the guy who wrapped the boat around his waist, that's a different strength, you know? So I guess that's cool so that people understand like fitness and muscles more yeah do you think ultimately the main question is does this increase sort of like male representation in terms of different archetypes for sure for sure for sure i mean i i would like to i, I have a question if like we think other asian countries are gonna try to make shows with their buff men right you know how like asians globally they kind of understand that they're seen as like you know smaller guys and everything like that but what if like Maybe not China, but maybe China could do it, but maybe like Indonesia, Japan could do right. one. You're saying uh, sort of like how they copied Show Me the Money, which was the Korean rap show, and, and turned that into a rap of China, right? Yeah, and everybody copied that show format, uh, The Voice or American Idol, whatever right. the show right. format is, they all copied that to like put on a bunch of rappers and singers, right? So maybe maybe, maybe this is a new, yeah. new format I, of a show. I will say this, man. Korea, Seoul, Korea is absolutely the cultural leader in Asia. Bro, they're killing it, man. I'm, I'm, dude, they're giving us so much to talk about and so many 
new pieces of media that kind of just make you think like, oh, shoot, I didn't expect Asians to make this type of show. This is cool. So got to give it up to them. Oh, man, man so this I'm is excited. kind of uh, interesting. Like we just issued our 492nd Wu Xiaopian dynastic piece and their physical 100. Maybe, I don't know, somebody needs to take some inspiration. Yeah, so... <laughs> Well, you know, like, Korea is not a big place, but, like, we just try to utilize, like, every citizen we have. Like, every citizen is going to be in a a, a reality <laughs> oh, show. If you are fat, you're going to be on Lookism IRL real life version. You're going to be the fat guy. Yeah. If you're, like, the buff guy, you get on the buff guy show. Yeah. And if you're, like, ugly, then you go into, like, a makeover contest. And then if you're poor, you're going to be put in Squid Game. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're buff and good looking and you can sing, then you'll be a K-pop star. So, man, shout out though. Honestly, uh, they're just producing so much good content. You guys let us know in the comments down below what you think about Physical 100. Do you watch it? Do you think it's a big inspiration for a lot of people? Did it make you want to work out more? Hey, guys, let us know what you think of Physical 100 in the comments section below. Props well-deserved. Shout out South Korea. Let us know. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.